द एस ए थियराइजिंग पैट्रियार्की बै सिलविया वैलबी प्रसन्स ए न्यू वे ऑफ थियराइजिंग पैट्रियार्की आर्ग्यूइंग दैट एक्सीस्टिंग अकाउंट्स ऑफ द कॉन्सेप्ट हेव शार्ट कमिंग्स एंड आर् नाट इंट्रेंसिक टू द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ पैट्रियार्की क्रिटिक्स हेव फोकस्ड ऑन द प्रॉब्लम्स एक्सीस्टिंग एक्सीस्टिंग थियरी ऑफ पैट्रियार्की हेव इन डीलिंग विद हिस्टारिकल एंड क्रॉस कलचुरल वेरिएशन इन जेडर इनक्वालिटी and differences between women especially in relation to ethnicity and class this essay aims to construct an adequate theory of patriarchy that these criticisms into account patriarchy and capitalism are analytically independent and the tension between the two systems over the exploitation of women's labor are supported by pointing to the tensions between the two systems This essay defines patriarchy as a system of social structures and practices in which men dominate, oppress and exploit women. Patriarchy needs to be conceptualized at different levels of abstraction. At the most abstract level, it exists as a system of social relations which exists in the articulation of capitalism and racism. At the next level, it is composed of six structures. the patriarchal mode of production patriarchal relations in paid work patriarchal relations in the state male violence patriarchal relations in sexuality and patriarchal relations in cultural cultural institutions valby argues that patriarchy is not reducible to capitalism even in a mediated way by constructing a model of patriarchy in terms of several partially independent structures Walby aims to provide a more comprehensive understanding of gender relations. The dual systems analysis focuses on the relationship between capitalism and patriarchy, arguing that both predate and postdate capitalism. Patriarchal relations exist in feudal societies and are a significant obstacle to the argument that racism can can be de-patriarchy. Existing dual systems theory considers the articular capitalism in various ways such as combining them into one system or conceptualizing them as two empirically interacting systems some writers maintain the analytical separation of patriarchy different levels of social formation while others maintain the separation at the level of the expropriation of women's labor by men Hartman's conception of the relation between capitalism and patriarchy is similar to Mitchell's but she argues that patriarchy predates capitalism and this is expropriation of women's labor is not new and distinctive to capitalist societies she supports her argument with historical examples of women being excluded from better jobs by organized male workers with the support of the state However the problem with dual systems analysis is, is whether they can adequately sustain the duality of capitalism and patriarchy in their analysis Young claims that this is an inherently impossible task because they cannot account for patriarchal aspects in the level allocated to capitalism or capitalist elements in the level allocated to patriarchy the specification of the nature of the separation between patriarchy and capitalism is necessary and achievable but hartman's analysis is problematic in understanding the tension between patriarchy and capitalism and insufficiently specifying the different structures of the patriarchy conflicts over the exploitation of women's labor between patriarchal and capitalist interests have been present throughout history with employers seeking cheap labor from women husbands have historically resisted this process as it undermines their control over and exploitation of women in the in the household this conflict has sometimes taken the form of political struggle at the state level for example the 19th century protective legislation limited women's employment in the best paid sectors of work such as mills and mines This century male workers used the state to support to privileged access to paid work in legislation passed each war time giving legal backing to men's demands that women war time workers be thrown out of their jobs at the end of the wars the conflict between patriarchy and capitalism has varied according to the localized power of male workers 
employ employers and women in engineering the exceptionally strong organization of engineering workers led to the exclusion of women more than in cotton textiles and clerical work this interaction between patriarchy and capitalism has led to specific forms of occupational segregation by sex which is not to the articulation of patriarchy and capitalism but takes specific forms and becomes a variety of social practices critics of the concept of patriarchy argue that there are significant differences between the labor market experience of women of color due to racist structures disadvantaging them in paid work the intersection of ethnicity and gender may alter ethnic and gender relations however most black feminists do not deny inequality between men and women arguing that racism may be of overriding political concern to women of color essentialism a historicism and universalism are critiques of the concept of patriarchy essentialist theories tend to produce an a historic and universalist of patriarchy but most writers have a firm notion that patriarchy is different across time and space however it is not appropriate to suggest that they all think that change does not take place Feminist theorists have attempted to specify the structures of patriarchy within an explicit realist framework. They provide four forms of relations necessary for patriarchy: biological, reproduction, heterosexuality, marriage, and the nuclear family. The first two are transhistorical, while the latter two are historically and spatially specific. However, there are problems with the choice and characterization of characterization of these four. the absence of patriarchal relations in paid work in the state and in male violence is strange given the range of work argued for their importance in an analysis of gender relations there is a question as to whether the first two are usefully characterized as universal practices as not all people biologically reproduce or engage in heterosexual relations the argument for the selection of these four forms of relations is not well developed so it usefully raises the question as to the identification of the structures of patriarchy but does not provide a sufficient answer while be discuss the identification of key patriarchal structures within a realist framework focusing on six main structures a patriarchal mode of production patriarchal relations within wage labor the patriarchal state male violence patriarchal relations in sexuality and patriarchal culture structures are defined in terms of social relations in each structure and are not identified in terms of spatially located sites each structure is composed of substructures and practices such as the differentiation of full time and part time work in the labor market the six structures are derived both derived both theoretically and empirically and represent the most significant constellations of social relations that structure gender relations valby argues that the concept of patriarchy must balance between reducing the complexity of the world to a limited number of elements to produce analytic and not oversimplifying to capture the specifics of the situation the critics of patriarchy use a concept of social structure similar to that of giddens which involves institutionalized features of society that stretch across time and space the structure of housework has been analyzed stages the domestic division of labor other aspects of social relations and inequality studies show unequal amounts of housework and total labor time performed by spouses and women have lesser share in the consumption of household goods however some argue that the domestic of labor is not to women's disadvantage as it is part of an alliance of oppressed groups against the superordinate group humphries and hooks argue that the family enables the working class to provide human support for those unable to obtain a wage such as the old and the sick hooks argues that argues that domestic work especially with children is preferential for women of color who find waged labor boring and alienating the argument is not that women's labor is disadvantageous or advantageous in comparison to marriage options as marriage options are open to most women patriarchs in paid work form the second structure of the patriarchal structure affecting women's access 
to paid work and the segregation of women within it this closure of access by men against women including women's work and low wages is influenced by capitalist and racist factors the practice of total exclusion of women paid employment was significant in industrialized countries but the reduction of such bans in recent decades is an indirect consequence of occupational segregation segregation takes several forms including vertical and horizontal and between full timers and part timers women's women's jobs are usually graded as less skilled than men's and the differentiation between full and part time jobs makes significant differences in legal protection given to the employees changes in patriarchal domination in paid work are key to understanding changes in women's oppression the state patriarchal structure that significantly impacts gender relations as women are excluded from access to state resources and power due to their lack of power within gendered political forces brought to bear on the state the state's decision making positions and resolution of issues in favor of women are also less represented than men Patriarchal relations in the state shape rules on divorce, marriage, fertility, wage discrimination, sexuality, male homosexuality, prostitution, pornography, male violence, housing priorities for battered women and belief systems. Male violence often seen as a random individual phenomenon has a social structural nature and is constituted as various practices including rape beating father daughter incest flashing sexual harassment at work and sexual assault most women significantly alter their conduct as a consequence of, as a consequence of fear of male violence which is historically variable and not a biological constant the state is seen as having a monopoly over legitimate coercion but this contradicts the notion of the state as a centralized agency therefore it is essential to consider whether the state has a monopoly over legitimate coercion or centralized agency sexuality is a significant patriarchal structure particularly in the context of heterosexuality which is distinct from lesbianism and homosexuality its primary causal significance is in guiding women towards marriage as a desirable goal and through their sexualization and simul sexuality Sex- sexuality is a set of social practices that cannot be reduced to psychological or biological levels and is historically and cross culturally variable in its forms it has effects on other aspects of gender relations but the extent of these effects is subject to controversy sexuality is more important in constructing social relations than is customary in social theory but less important than that accorded it by many radical feminist writers mckinnon suggests that sexuality is central to feminism like labor in marxism and that it is through sexuality that men are able to objectify and dominate women sexuality needs to be identified separately not conflated into other frames some feminists argue that sexuality is more important today in the subordination of women but this is a mistake as it is historically and spatially specific sexuality needs to be identified separately and treated independently for exploration of its historical and spatial significance patriarchal culture is a diverse set of practices that shape gendered subjectivity and gender distinction it is best understood as institutionally rooted discourses rather than ideology there are mul- multiple discourses on femininity and masculinity varying by age class and ethnicity religions have historically been important patriarchal discourses laying down correct forms of conduct for men and women the educational system has also played a role in differentiating men and providing them with, them with more credentials discourses on femininity and masculinity are institutionalized in all social life sites including religions media and education masculinity identity is closely tied to work with only certain forms of work reinforcing masculinity work can take different forms depending on the interaction of patriarchal structures in western history there have been two major forms of patriarchy public and private the distinction between private and public forms of patriarchy is important 
but dwarkin and brown's accounts are limited by their focus on limited arenas in the 18th and 19th centuries middle class women were excluded from the public sphere due to domestic ideology and strong sanctions against non marital sexuality women were denied citizenship rights including suffrage and property ownership cultural institutions supported the notion that a, a woman's place was in the home most women engage in paid work but there is considerable wages gap between men and women and extensive occupational segregation the sanctions on non marital sexuality are less severe and the circulation of sadistic pornography images has increased marriages can be ended by divorce but women still remain responsible for child care after divorce continuing the demands upon their labor public forms of patriarchy are divided into two one based on the state as the basis of bringing women into the pub continuum with eastern europe role and the usa playing an equivalent role the state has taken on some tasks previously performed by women privately in the household and organized them collectively the complexity of the theory of patriarchy suggests that certain historically specific forms of patriarchy depend on the, on the relations between its structures the major forms identified are the private and public differentiated into markets and state based subtypes there is likely to be tension between patriarchy and capitalism over the exploitation of women's labor